Hey guys, so let me tell you how much you can buy if you buy from a distributor. Um, I've heard prices as low as $195, but the real price from the trusted distributor I use is around $210, $215, depending on how much quantity you want to buy and the variety, I guess. If you buy a lot of VIP packs, then they discount it. So at $210 or $215, let's just call it $210. Um, how do you make money from this? On So I mainly sell via Amazon. I did about $1.2 million in the past two years. Not selling Magic Cards, because Magic Cards is really hard to sell because you're competing directly against Wizard of the Coast. But selling Legos and Mystery Minis and... Man, there was a while that we were selling a bunch of Frozen 2 product. And Frozen product was really, really good for us. Even today... Frozen product for us at least outsells Frozen 2. I know, surprising. But um, in this sense, Amazon takes 20% off the top. Uh, and then if you want to go Amazon Prime, you, you have to mail. So you have to ship the item to Amazon or one of the Amazon centers. Then they charge you money for storage. Then they charge you money for shipping it to their customer. So at the when you add all of this up and you do the simple math, I would say given shipping that you have to ship to Amazon, Amazon's gonna charge you storage and shipping and they're gonna take 20% off the top, you're probably looking at 30%. And then you have to include you know, your time for shipping it, your time for packaging it the way that Amazon wants it packaged. And you're talking about 30% on maybe $70. So if you sold this box on Amazon for $300, which is you have to do it because right now it's selling for free 10 and you do have to be a little lower to get any tracks in against Wizard of the Coast, you bought it for 210 and it costs $60 to ship it. You might be like, oh, cool, you're making $30. Uh, no, because there's return product. So if you're making $30 a box and someone returns one box, even just one box, or there's some type of credit card fraud. I mean, there's a million bad things that can happen to you as a retailer. Uh, but mostly it's somebody opens the packs, claims that they came that way, and then now Amazon gives them a refund. You're, you might lose money. Um, and it's even hard to break even under the Amazon model. Under the eBay model and TCG Play model, I haven't really tried either one of those. Obviously, they charge less money than Amazon, but it's also more work. You need employees to package and ship direct to the customer, right? For Amazon, it's a little bit better because Amazon's going to do it. They're going to do your customer service. Um, I mean, most game stores don't even have someone for customer service, which is really appalling in any other space. So when you talk about, uh, okay, if you buy this for 210 how are you not making money from this? And why wouldn't you personally buy it? And the answer is because the quantity I need to buy at. Uh, my distributor has a minimal quantity. And if this is a dead set, or if I'm making $10 a box or you know whatever it is after uh, loss of goods and return products and whatnot, not, I'm not happy because there could be a product like Dragon Maze where, uh-oh, and the way that distributors work is that you have to sign, you have to order even the bad products to get the good products. So it can't, you can't be like, oh, well, I'm going to order, I'm going to order only double masters. And that's the only time I'm going to be ordering is when I know the set is going to kill it. No, no, they, no, no. You need to order Phone of the Aldrin, Pharaohs Beyond Death, Ikoria, and so on before they let you even sniff Double Masters. That's just how they work, and for really obvious reasons. Otherwise, no one would order those sets in the quantities that people order them. So that's explaining why at even $210. So a lot of you are investing at $300 or whatever it is. Like it, I find that pretty laughable because people who can buy this at 210 are not even investing. Because you, when you're a store, you don't invest in product. It makes no sense. You need to flip the new product so you have cash to buy the newest product. 
And if you're if you're not able to flip the current product, you are screwed. Because all your cash flow is tied up in dead product, like Dragon Maze. So Dragon Maze was a catastrophe because you can go to your local game store and see that the you know, it's just they paid $78 a box for one of those boxes, and it's just been sitting there losing value every year. At some point in time, the game store has to be like, wow, this is really bad. And all it takes is one Dragon Maze to destroy your game store. Or more recently, Hour of Devastation. I know people are saying, oh, look at the box prices. That's amazing. But who's buying it? Like, So A, there's a problem, right? The problem is demand is not really high years later. Okay, Maybe the box value is that price and there are some dum-dums buying it at that price. But it doesn't, it's not nearly the volume it would be if it just came out and was in standard. Um, the same with Core 2021. I don't know who's playing Magic right now, but um, I saw a video recently from uh, Rudy, and he said the expected value is $57. That's retail TCG mids, okay? Let me figure out what the expected value is uh, right now for you on actual no one ever gets blanking tcg mid okay that's like crazy plus you pay fees and so on uh let's see tcg mid let's do tcg low okay tcg low as of right now which is july 23rd of core 2021 is 44 dollars and 72 cents that's what you would get selling at TCG Low. Oh, by the way, TCG Player wants its fees. Let's say the fees are with shipping and things 20%. Well, that's another $8 off the top, another $9 off the top. So you're getting $35? Great, fantastic. You bought, you're getting a dollar a pack if you're lucky. And that's not, I mean, there could be booster boxes that are worth like $10 or something based on the quality of cards. That's the danger, okay? The danger is you're stuck with sealed product, which people make it seem like that's amazing. Uh, yes, but you're stuck with it for a reason. Like, it's not because people really, really wanted it. It's the reverse. All right, let me give you some other interesting things. Ikoria layer of behemoths right now is $35.43. Pharaoh's Beyond Death has increased in price actually to $43.58. This is the expected value if you were to open a booster pack at TCG player lows and then you have to subtract another 20% for fees if you sell it that way and then you have to value your time because your time is not free now, or it should not be considered free. I mean that would be very bad. So, I mean, you, I'm looking at these sets, and it's really, really bad. Uh, Ikoria is $35.43. Pharaoh's $43.58. Throne of the Alderaan has is $37.16. After you take 20% off, and then you calculate your time, I mean, it's like you're buying a $100 box, and you have lost 85% of the value. That's the danger. You might be like, oh, why doesn't everyone buy this at $200 or $210? What a great deal. No, th 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 there's danger. And the danger is they force you to buy these crappy sets like Throne of the Elf. To get this set at a reasonable price, at the $210 price or the $195 price or the $210, $215 price, you would have to have bought Throne of the Elderin regular boxes, Ferris Beyond Death regular boxes and Ikoria regular boxes. Ikoria at this moment, and of course, uh, Core 2021, which is 4126 TCG player low. I guarantee you, you go in your local game store, and I guarantee you there will be Throne of the Eldrin and it won't sell. Like, how is it going to sell? It's main mythic, the chase mythic that everyone's chasing is banned, and the chase rare that everyone is chasing is banned. Like how, who would be interested in buying Throne of the Elder Inn? I see it all the time on sale online and I just never have any interest in buying it. 
Pharaoh's Beyond Death, pretty interesting one. It is seeing some modern play because of Euro. Uh, but $43.58, still not very good. Core 2021 just came out, and it's at $41.26. TCG player level. That's the crazy part about Double Masters. Once, if you break the box and try to sell these singles, there's no way you break even at 210 after fees and your own time. You have to value your own time at some amount of money. That's even at $10 an hour for you to open, ship, pack, and send all these cards off. And by the way, TCG players still going to take a fee from you, even if you do your own shipping or eBay. or I mean, it doesn't really matter who's taking the fee. Somebody is going to take a fee from you. So how is anyone supposed to make money from this? And that's my conclusion. So let me tell you the difference between how this works and Legos works. The Lego margins are very similar. I mean, it's similar. It's a little higher, but there is not a rush to sell your Legos. Your Legos actually can get retired and they can go up in value, but they typically never go down in value. That's the key here. Your Legos don't go down in value. Here, if you have a throne of the Alderaan box and it's going and there's less demand for it you just don't really it's not going to work there's too much risk and the risk right now is Corset 2021 to get this set your distributor will ask you to buy Corset 2021 that's what they asked me to do and I said no to get this at 210, I would need to buy this crappy set. And I would lose a ton of money because I'm looking at the cards right now. And it's not great. I mean, I could buy the collector's edition of it, of course. But then again, the margins on that are also not great. What I'm trying to suggest is even at 210, it might seem reasonable for you guys to say, oh, of course, buy that long-term investment even at 210 your local game store is not viewing this as a long-term investment they're viewing this as a flip it and forget it and why is that do you think margins if you've never sold a box on amazon you should try it one time and you will lose money but it will be worth the educational value because then you will understand how difficult it is to sell a booster box bye guys